Well, the CEO of the social media giant Meta revealing that his company censored some of its content around the COVID-19 pandemic. Mark Zuckerberg says his teams didn't want to, but they were under serious pressure from the Biden administration. And he is telling members of Congress that this will not happen again. Well, our Sunderland Sarfati is following this from Washington. Um, this is fascinating. This revelation came in a letter from Mark Zuckerberg, as I understand it, the House Judiciary Committee. What more do we know about what is in that letter? Yeah, Becky, it's a very strongly worded letter sent from Mark Zuckerberg to the House Judiciary Committee, who has been pushing for more information about um, the spread of potential disinformation, the spread of information and potential censorship, they say, um, on the part of the White House. And Zuckerberg in this letter is very clear. He uses the words pressure. He said he felt pressure from the Biden White House uh, to censor some of the information about the COVID-19 pandemic. And and he says uh, he expresses regret. He says he should have been more outspoken at the time. He now believes it is wrong knowing what he now knows. Um, and in this letter, he says, quote, in 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our teams for months to censor uh, certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire, and expressed a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree. That was him in this letter letter to the House Judiciary. Um, House Republicans, Becky, they're already, you know, highlighting this information, celebrating um, this admission on the part of Zuckerberg. The White House defending their position, uh, to a statement to CNN today saying that uh, during that time, they believe the administration, they said, encourage responsible actions to protect public health safety. And notably, Zuckerberg says that he will be ready to push back more forcefully if this ever happens again in the future. Becky. And Sutherland, he also in this letter um, suggested that the FBI warned about potential Russian disinformation around Hunter Biden and the Ukrainian firm Burisma affecting the 2020 election. And that information was suppressed in some way as well. Is that what we are to understand from this? That's absolutely right, Becky. And again, this is something that House Republicans have been pushing to learn more about. He says in this letter that in the fall of 2020, his team temporarily demoted a story that was put out by the New York Post that alleged Biden family corruption. Um, they demoted that, he says, so that it could be cleared through their own fact checkers as they were reviewing this story. And Zuckerberg in this letter says that since then, it's been cl made clear to him that the reporting was not Russian disinformation and he says in retrospect that they should not have demoted the story. So that's an important clarification. And he says that Meta has changed some policies to make sure that this doesn't happen again. But That's again, true. this just giving a lot of fuel to the fire of House Republicans pushing uh, for more information, especially with the, the Biden family and the information that's spread over social media. Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook's parent company, now says he regrets agreeing to requests from the Biden administration to censor content related to COVID-19. In a letter to the House Judiciary Committee Chairman Jim Jordan, Zuckerberg wrote this, quote, in 2021, senior officials from the Biden administration, including the White House, repeatedly pressured our team for months to censor certain COVID-19 content, including humor and satire, and expressed a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree. I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. Zuckerberg went on to say Facebook should not have temporarily demoted an article from the New York Post reporting on allegations of corruption in the Biden family in the lead up to the 2020 election. The panel's back. We're also joined by CNN media analyst Sarah Fisher. Uh, Sarah, good morning. Wonderful good morning. to have you. Thanks for um, jumping in on this story. I, I, I think what Zuckerberg has done here uh, is fascinating. Uh, it's not something we've heard uh, from him in this kind of direct way before. Um, what is going on here and what does it what does it mean uh, for for future elections or issues like this? This is a huge deal. You'll recall Republicans from two states sued. They went all through a huge court battle, basically alleging that the government overreached. They lost that court case, but we never heard from Facebook. We never heard from Meta. So we didn't know how they felt about the issue. This is the first time now. And them coming out and saying, look, this was a big deal. We don't agree with these policies. It sets a precedent moving forward that if any government official, if the White House were to pressure them again, we now know where they stand and hope Hopefully they now feel empowered to push back. What do you what are the politics behind this? I mean, clearly 
Zuckerberg is being influenced by a wide variety of factors. Sending this letter to Jim Jordan, did he feel like he had to do it? Why now? Because ahead of the election, they're going to face a lot of content moderation issues. Even though they don't want to be involved in politics and news anymore, inevitably they are. And so if there is going to be an 11th hour issue like the New York Post story and Facebook were to make the wrong call, they want everyone in Congress, particularly Republicans, to know that their intent here is not to be picking one side, that they're doing what they think is best for the health of the platform. But if he didn't speak up about the White House pressure now, no one would have believed them then. Mark Preston, what do you see here? If you have a question for Sarah, too, I'd be interested in kind of like how you, you, you spend a lot of your time thinking about how we as a news organization here at CNN are going to cover these elections, cover politics. It can be really, really tricky. And Facebook, now Meta, was at the center of this. God, I hate walking the center line again, but I, but I agree with Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> no, 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 I agree. I mean, I mean, the idea that we have to protect free speech is critical to our democracy, no question about that. We still haven't been able to handle how do we how do we slow the disinformation so as people do, you know don't get wrong information. The government clearly didn't do it the right way, and it, but there needs to be a way. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. The way, by the way, is transparency, and that's what I think a lot of the government officials are starting yeah. to lean into. Facebook can make all the content moderation decisions in the world. We want to know how their algorithms work and why they're making them, and then we can hold them accountable to the decision whether they think it's right or wrong. We didn't have a lot of those transparency measures in place. It was the 2020 election, and quite frankly, the New York Post story that has now forced a lot of tech companies to be more forthcoming around how they make these decisions. Well, are they telling us more about their algorithm? They are. I mean, now this algorithm is much more like TikTok. It elevates what is going viral as opposed to what your close friends and family think. And that matters, Casey, because a lot of the political content being shared on Facebook, mm -hmm. it came from your close friends and family. So we know that there's a reduction in political content. We know that there's a reduction in news content. And we know that it's easier for a random person to go viral very quickly. Now, that's a disinformation problem within itself. But a lot of that disinformation right now, it actually isn't mostly politics. It's a lot of disinformation around consumer harms, things like, you know, someone hawking a bad drug product that's not good for weight loss, but they claim that it is. Yeah, well, there's, we've just uncorked a whole lot of other issues <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to dig into. Uh, but uh, anyway, very, very remarkable moment uh, for Mark Zuckerberg here.